Hello everyone, my name is Tamsin and today I'm going to be reading the story Growing Frogs by Vivian French and illustrated by Alison Bartlett. Once when I was little, my mum read me a story about a frog that drank and drank and drank and grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Afterwards, mum asked me if I'd like to watch some real frogs growing. I know that there's a pond with lots of frogs' eggs in it, she said. We could bring some home. I was frightened. I don't want any frogs jumping about getting any bigger and bigger, I said. But mum gave me a hug. It's only a story, she said. Even when our frogs are grown up, they'll still be smaller than my hand. Oh, I said. Okay. Next day went, we went to look at the pond. The water was dark brown and there was grey jelly stuff floating on the top. Yuck! I said. There's the frog spawn, said mum, and she pointed to the grey jelly stuff. I bet that was laid last night, Friday night. The, dogs, the frogs were croaking so loudly, I couldn't get to sleep. And then at the bottom it says, male frogs croak to attract female frogs for mating. The females lay eggs called frog spawn. You see the black dot in the middle of each jelly shell, said mum. That's going to grow into a tadpole. Where are the frogs? I asked. Tadpoles grow into frogs, she said. Little ones. No giant frogs here. Mum put some pond weed and some stones into a bag. She filled the bucket with pond water. Then I scooped a little bit of the frog spawn into it. Yeah, it says, always use pond water for growing frogs at home. Tap water has chemicals like fluoride in it, which might poison them. When we got home, we put everything into a big fish tank in the kitchen. The cat kept peering at it, so we had to put a wire net over the top. I counted 27 little black dots. Each dot was inside its own jelly shell. The tank needs to be somewhere that's cool and away from direct sunlight. Every day when I woke up, I went straight downstairs to look at the frog spawn. The little dots grew into bigger dots and then into tiny commas. And one morning I saw the first tadpole wriggling out of its jelly shell. In a tank, the eggs hatch into tadpoles about 10 days after they are laid. At first, the tadpoles didn't do much. They just stayed close to their jelly shells and nibbled at the pondweed. But after two or three days, they looked quite different. There were feathery things on their heads and I could see their eyes. They swam very fast. The feathery bits are called gills and they're, um, they're what underwater animals use for breathing. Ten of the eggs didn't hatch out. The black dots went dull and cloudy and mum took them away. Then we cleaned up the tank and put in fresh weed and pond water. One of the tadpoles swam into my hand when I was putting the stone back. It was slippery and slithery and it made me jump. After the tadpoles hatch, the pond water needs to be changed at least twice a week. After a bit, I got used to having tadpoles and I didn't look at them so often. When mom told me their little feathery bits had gone, I didn't believe her. But it was true. Tadpoles only have gills outside their bodies at first. Then they grow gills inside their bodies and the outside ones disappear. 
It was me that saw the next change though. Look! I shouted and mum rushed to see. Some of the tadpoles had grown two little bumps. Mum says, says the bumps would grow into back legs. They grew very quickly. One day there were two little bumps. The next day the bumps were stumps. The day after that they were almost proper legs. And then the feet unfolded. They were webbed like tiny brown green fans. And they aren't tadpoles anymore, I said. They're not quite frogs. Not, the not quite frogs grew front legs next and then their tails got shorter and their mouths got wider. Now they're frogs, said mum, baby ones. Soon the baby frogs were popping up and gulping at the surface of the water. One of them tried to climb onto the stones but it slid off. Mum said they were getting ready to leave the water. Grown-up frogs breathe air, she said. That's what the stones are for, so our frogs can climb out of the water and breathe. As tadpoles slowly turn into frogs, they grow lungs for breathing air and their gills disappear. Not long after that, Mum said it was time to take our baby frogs back to live in the pond with all the other baby frogs. I was sorry I had to leave them, but mum said we could come back and visit every day. Baby frogs need space to grow and room to hop around. Grown up frogs live most of their lives on land, only returning, returning to their ponds to breed. One rainy morning, a week later, mum woke me up very early. Hurry, she said, and we ran downstairs, out to the pond. There were hundreds of tiny frogs hopping over the grass. They're looking for dark wet places to live in, mum said, but they won't go far and in a couple of years they'll be back to lay frogs spawn of their own. They will be bigger then, I asked. Just a little, said mum. Good, I said. I like having frogs jumping about, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The end. So one thing I really love about this book is that it's teaching children about tadpoles and frogs, how tadpoles become frogs. And it has little bits of information as they re you read through the book. It tells you a little bit more about frogs. So it's not only a lovely story to hear. Then the pictures are very beautiful and bright and attractive to actually look at. And I feel like the description and the images of the tadpoles are really good. And you can probably see how they're developing. It shows you every single little stage. It's really great. There's actually a full series of animal books, which I will be going through some of them. Um, and they tell you all about animals. So this is a really good book if you would like your child to know all about tadpoles or growing frogs, as the title says. This is an amazing book to get.